Hey! Hello? Long time, no. Sit in car with coffee, gossip, hot topics, bestie vibes, catch up videos. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Got my red cardi on, which is from Revolve actually. I will leave it linked down below because I feel like you guys are gonna ask. It's the most high quality cardigan I've ever, I've ever had. Like, it's so cute. Feeling the festive vibe, so I'm feeling like maybe I'll get a festive drink. So I feel like let's go to Costa. Could do it some lunch as well, to be honest, but filming plus eating as much as I'm starving doesn't always work out. So we will see what their menu has to offer. And I am actually just preferring the coffee at Acosta, it, it do be a little bit better, I can't lie. So, I don't actually even know what their festive menu is or what it's saying, but we're gonna get a coffee and have a catch up and a gossip in the car. Just been bopping to the new Tate McRae album on the way, okay, let me just assess. Ooh, okay, I might have to get a Christmas panini and, oh no, hang on. Ooh, I know. Hi there, can I get a few sticks? Hi there, um, please can I get a turkey and trimmings toasty? Yeah, sure. And can I get a Terry's chocolate, orange hot chocolate, please? Sure, I need cream with that. Um, yes, please. Can I get a small one? Small size. Do you have anything else to do? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Cool, no worries. Drive down when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so impulsive, the way I never get a hot chocolate. I'm feeling festive, what can I say? And I freaking love Terry's chocolate orange. So I just saw that and thought, that's probably gonna make me sick, but I'm kind of in the mood to be sick. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, they gave me a Terry's chocolate orange on it. Now I'm just gonna find somewhere to park. I am so excited about this. I genuinely think this might be my first hot chocolate in like two years. I'm not a massively chocolatey person, which is why I was so shook just then when I was like, I'm gonna get that. And they gave me a little chocky. That's so cute, I'm gonna put that in my bag. Okay, let's try this. So this is the Terry's chocolate orange hot chocolate. Oh. Oh, that is good. Oh, that's lovely. That's the only way to describe it. That's really lovely. It genuinely is just like liquefied Terry's chocolate orange. I'm very excited about this. I love a turkey toasty. And if this is somewhat Christmassy, I'm going to go ahead and assume maybe some like cranberry. Although I can't say it looks too good. But let's try. Oh my god, that's so good. It's giving turkey. It's obviously like cheesy. There's brie in there, cranberry. Holy shit, this is good. Okay, let me eat this and let's get into the gossip and the hot topics and the catching up. The way I just inhaled that, criminal. Only the one bit though, but you know. To resist that second half. I deserve a medal. Anyway, whenever I put up these things, and even when I said I was going to do like a um, car chats video, so many of you actually said like missed these. And do you know what? So have I. Like, I always want these to feel like, you know, if you go on like a late night drive with your bestie, because shit needs to be spoken about and you can only speak about it in the car so no one else can hear. That's why I love a gossip. Like, that's the kind of vibes I want it to be. But whenever I do say I want it to be like a gossipy thing, so many of you say it's not gossip, but I just want your advice. So I feel like it's going to be a mix of just like spilling some tea in the sense of my opinions on things, catching up with you guys and any advice that you may want. So grab your drink so you can pretend you're the person next to me. I want to drink this too quick because I feel like I'll vomit. I can't lie. And I'm going out this evening. So that's that. Oh, but that is so good. Anyway, like, for example, somebody said that my housemates constantly leave me out. What should I do? I've never been in a situation of having housemates. I didn't go to uni 
and I have always lived on my own, which is actually to my detriment in terms of just like sometimes life skills and relationships like I've, I've not known what it's like to have to share as such besides when I used to live at home with like my sister and stuff like that so I can't give like too much advice because I could just say something and it's everyone that's had housemates might be like that's so much easier said than done but it depends are they literally just your housemates and not necessarily like your friends is there a difference or is the situation that when you live with people like you're you're automatically friends because i'm sure i've had friends where they just literally refer to their housemates as housemates and they don't really see them they don't really hang out so maybe that's the way that they're feeling which sounds really horrible but like if they don't feel like obliged to have to invite you to things because they don't actually see you necessarily as a friend and they just kind of see you as a housemate the number one that's a really tough pill to swallow and that's such a shame if you genuinely like value them like as a friend and stuff but all I can say is is I don't know like do you have other friends that you can do things with like yes you've got these friends that you live with but and you might want to be included but they're just not they're not including you sometimes I just find like people will give you a message but if it's upsetting you definitely have a conversation about it and be like look like I would really actually love to come to some of the things that you guys do like but, like, is there a reason that you're not inviting me? And then maybe they just might be like, oh, sorry, like, I didn't know that you wanted to come. So, you know, and then they make note to invite you next time. But I think if you've not vocalised it yet that you would actually really love to come to these things and then they continue to do it, then that's all that you need to know. Like, you should never, like, beg for someone's friendship. Like, put your energy into where it's valued. Okay, speaking on, like, tea, so many of you guys said, do I know about the pink honey drama and i feel like i haven't actually been able to escape it on tiktok if you don't know what i'm talking about it's a, a makeup brand quite smallish makeup brand um sort of main audience is on tiktok so if you're not necessarily on tiktok you might not have heard of them as such but i think what happened was they did like a little what appeared to be like an influencer trip or like getaway or something and there was just absolutely no diversity or um, really inclusivity of, like, anyone other than if you had, like, blonde hair, skinny, that sort of vibe, you get the picture. Um, and I think that necessarily wasn't... I mean, that was what was upsetting everyone and was, like, what was bad, but I think it was what her response video was that kind of, like was more upsetting because she i i saw it but i didn't really watch it. i i think that's the first thing that came up so i didn't really understand what had happened until then after i'd seen that my algorithm told me that i'm interested in it or like because i watched it for like 10 seconds then i started seeing all the other videos of like what that was actually about i didn't actually really think that she'd said sorry or like sort of said like going forward we're going to be doing this this and this to be more inclusive i think she just tried to explain herself and said that the people on that trip were the people that do like the best for her brand and it was meant to be a thank you type thing which I actually totally get in that sense but I think from a brand's perspective that should have been oh, number one if that is all that the trip was then I don't think you the brand should have posted at all and i don't think they should have been like obtaining freebies for everyone like if you're trying to say thank you you're wanting to spend money on these people because they've made you a lot of money so buy the things yourself that way no one needs to do any socials or anything and you can keep it private like if it's just a real intimate thank you to the people that have done the best for your brand then i think that's what should have been done especially if okay that's what you want to do and you want to thank everyone that does the best for your brand and makes you the most sales if you're actually looking at the data and stuff like and you're seeing that it that that is it is a certain type of person that's making you the most money that should kind of be a little not necessarily a red flag because the tiktok girlies go hard i see so many people working up those tiktok sales and they really put in the graft um, and that goes for so many people. They obviously just have, like, their bigger audience. So, yeah, probably do make them more revenue. But I think that does cause to say, like, so why is that? Is that because 
you tend to follow people that look like you and stuff. So is it that your products are catering more to a certain demographic if everyone that makes the most money for your brand looks the same? I think that should have been, I think that's what everyone was trying to get at. So like her saying that was the reason that she did the trip. Okay, that makes sense. But hello, like look at everyone that, that's there. Maybe you need to look inwards and be like, is that because, you know, a lot of dark skinned black girls, men, whoever, aren't actually able to use our products. So they're not posting about them do you see so i like i kind of watched it sort of unravel a little bit and i've heard people like speak about it and stuff um i think everyone that went on the trip having to apologize i think is a little extreme especially because some of some of these girls would have traveled hours probably to get there so to expect them to get up and leave i think was a little bit of a stretch i think make it known that oh like you know, was so-and-so not coming or, and like take mental notes. But I think, yeah, to make the stance afterwards of like maybe messaging the brand and being like, I really wasn't actually comfortable on that trip. Um, like appreciative they invited me, but I wasn't super comfortable. And I understand why that people's audiences would want them to like say something, but I don't think they need to, uh, uh, they need to apologize. And I was seeing a lot of um comments on, on these videos of people being like, you don't need to apologize. The brand needs to apologize. Cause I don't actually think the owner of the brand even apologized she just explained herself so i just think yeah a brand in 2023 needs to be going at all ends of the spectrum obviously some shades will be more popular than others cool invest more money into those but don't not have the other options available because you never know if you're not putting those shades out there how do you know if they are going to be like your best selling shade you just don't know that until you do it and you need you just have to be inclusive in 2023 like come on we've seen the rise and the fall of like so many brands because of this and it's just such a shame like that it's still happening and i feel so sorry for the people of color the disabled people the plus size people you know the people that work their ass off like doing their makeup and show so much love to the brand and just not being recognized at all i think yeah the the purpose of her trip if that was the case i think she should have kept it private like no posting whatsoever and yeah like not trying to get freebies from the small brands like i'm wanting to post about it because i don't really like you you're wanting to say thank you and that's fine so yeah i think i think the way it all went down was an absolute mess to be completely honest but I did see that she is also pregnant, so the, the amount of stress that she must be on right now must be awful. And I wouldn't wish that upon anyone, and the timing is absolutely terrible for her. But, you know, you can only hope that these brand owners live and they learn. But I heard this, there's been a few cases where it's been a bit questionable and a bit messy. So sometimes with situations, it does take something mega for you to wake up like god the amount of like friends that i've got that like the same thing keeps happening to them but until something actually it gets to like the like not like rock bottom but like something awful like this and with all the people jumping on it to say their piece as they should if they've got an opinion absolutely share it if you want to it shouldn't have ever got to that is what i'm trying to say like if when the first thing happened that really should be enough for people but i don't know why it's not but i mean i hope she's okay and it's not causing too much stress on the baby, but I further hope that she learns from this um, and it's not done too much damage for her brand for it to be too late. Um, because I do like Pink Honey products. I did. Um, I think they're really good. Hence um, why her brand has been so successful. But it would be great to see some in inclusivity from her because I just think that's ridiculous. And trips should be for the people... For, for like everyone and they should be inclusive and for people to get to experience them that like might not from like these other big corporate brands do you know what i mean like this is the chance you've got the platform as your small brand to really make a difference and give these people like these one possibly once in a lifetime like experiences do you know what i mean not everybody gets to go on a brand trip or a little getaway and in their personal life have never done that before either so yeah, the whole thing was an absolute mess. I don't agree with sort of the reasoning of the trip. And, well, I mean, I agree with the reason of the trip. I think that's a nice thing to do. But if you then look at who that's going to be, then, and if you still want to go ahead with it, don't post. 
people like just don't show it off as if that's like something to be super proud of in a sense like obviously you're proud of the people that do the amazing thing for you but the, the lack of diversity isn't like at all so yeah loads of you guys asked me about that and yeah like i said don't agree with it but also don't wish her any like additional stress because this must be like a fucking tough terrible time awful timing but just something to now work on and hopefully make the right changes and then steps in the right direction someone said what are your thoughts on hooking up with an ex now an ex i'm not sure i mean have i done it i don't actually really have an ex as such you know like that requires like a boyfriend i've had like situations where do i be going back yeah like i don't need to add like another body and if, if the bridge isn't completely burned, why not? But let's say, let's go hypothetical. Let's say it's an ex that you're with for like a couple of years and you break up and then maybe like a few months down the line revisit. It's all going to depend on how you feel up here. If you're so fucking over it and you're just like, you know what, when we used to, fuck, it was good. So like, why not if we're not with anyone else right now? why the fuck not as long as i feel like if you it depends if you're wanting to move on because if you do that you low-key don't know what feelings you might bring up and then if you're just gonna go back to being like i miss them then don't and i'm gonna say don't do it if it was an ex that it took you forever to get over don't do not even bother because there's plenty of other dick in the sea you don't need to sleep with them again. Yes, it's easy. Yes, you know it's good. But is it actually really worth making yourself upset and depressed again? No. No man is worth doing that. <laughs> Somebody else said, is older men a vibe like 20 years older? Okay. Older men are a vibe. So I'm 27. I think the oldest I would go is maybe like... For a relationship though... I don't think I would actually go too much older for, like, an actual relationship, like, for them to be my partner, because I don't want someone a lot older than me. Like, I kind of want to be doing life together and be, like, experiencing the same things. And I feel like if they're, like, a lot older than you, like, 20 years older than you, then I feel like power play will come into it and they will just have, like, a superior superiority complex over you. Or it's completely vice versa and you have to think, why 20 years older are you going for someone 20 years younger? Is it because you were so immature that you can't get anyone your own age? I think 20 years is actually quite drastically large. But saying that, if you're thinking that you just want to like hook up with someone 20 years older than you, again, slightly concerning, wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Not that I have done it, but well, I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know if it's a it's kind of a vibe for you but it's not a vibe for them like that's really bizarre like that they feel like they need to do that you know um but then sometimes i'm out and i see a silver fox and i'm like wow wow and they are probably 20 years older than me so <laughs> who knows i probably wouldn't recommend it like i'm just gonna say it here so i've said it 20 years slightly drastic older men yeah but I don't think I would go any higher than about 10 years. And that is just to, like, hook up with. I would not date someone 10 years older than me. Because I think we're just in two different stages of life. Oh, my God. Somebody said, did you watch any of Married at First Sight? And what do you think of the couples if you did? So, sorry. I said I wasn't going to do this. But I'm so hungry. So I was at an event the other day. And as people were coming in, the people that I was with, they were like, ah! Have you watched Married at First Sight? That's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. I haven't watched Married at First Sight, so I didn't know anything. But apparently, there's loads of drama. And then, drama actually started to kick off at the event between two of the people. And I was like, what? Like, what's happening? And they were like, shh, because one of them is behind you. And I was like, oh my god, okay, sorry. I don't know anything or anyone from Married at First Sight, so I didn't know. But no, so to go to your question, no, I haven't watched any of Married at First Sight. But I do know that there's drama still right now. So I feel like I need to go and watch it. Do you know what's a really good Married at First Sight? Is 
Married at First Sight Australia, they do not hold the fuck back. I've seen some fucking ruthless clips from Married at First Sight Australia. Like, that's always a good thing to binge if you want some real hardcore reality TV. Someone said, who are you kissing under the mistletoe? <sighs> Probably... We'll see you next week. When is this going up? This is going up on Sunday, guys. Next week. I'm going to vlog all of, like, next week because I am... My social calendar is fucking chock-a-block, love. I'm not joking. Chock-a-block. So, hopefully I get to kiss someone over the next week. Fingers crossed for me. But, um... No one planned. No one really springs to mind. Um, a few trips up in London. Um, I always just end up talking to people on a night out, so who knows... Don't necessarily always kiss someone on a night out. The one time I was talking to someone in Soho House, and we were literally mid-conversation, and he was like, you've got really nice teeth. And I was like, oh, okay, like, thank you. And then he was like, do you want to kiss? And I was like, um, <laughs> not really. Not at this very moment in time when I'm literally mid-conversation, and now you've got me thinking about my teeth, and like, uh, like uh, no. The men in London are just quite forward, and I do love it. And if I'm in the mood, then sure. But not, that's not the way to, that wasn't sexy. Like, nice teeth, do you want to kiss? Like, what do you want to do? Like, rub teeth? Like, what made you suddenly say that? Anyway, so yeah, like I said, I'm vlogging all of next week in the sense I'm going to take you along to as many things as possible. And I think I'm going to work out my outfits for everything that I'm doing. And the one that I think is, like, the best, I will film a get ready with me for. And that will go up first. And then the vlog of, like, everything that I did that week, I'll put up over the Christmas period so you guys have something to watch from me. So you've got that to look forward to, and that will be a fucking jam-packed vlog because I'm actually scared I'm going to be ill by Christmas Day. The amount of stuff I'm doing, I'm not joking. So let's just, let's hope somewhere along that way there's a chance for me to be under the mistletoe. Anyway, somebody said, do you know your New Year's resolutions yet? Not yet, but I really am... So happy that I've got back into my fitness, like, right now. Because I think then, for me, once this Christmas period is over and the fucking hot chocolates get put down, it's going to be my diet and alcohol. That is going to be my New Year's resolution. Diet has, like, been, it's been okay. Like, I've not been completely off the rails with it. Like, you know, I'm out having a panini and a hot chocolate right now. I'm not being super strict. And when I do have my dinner, um, chicken, fish, like, that sort of thing... I just know I could be stricter on it and really, like, get back into my calorie counting and things like that and, you know, hitting the protein goals. I think I'm going to do dry Jan. I'm really going to... Oh, no, shit, I got her. No, do you know what? I'm really going to try and do dry January or just, like, not have wine January type of thing. But I really want to try. But, like I said, I'm so glad that I've got back into my fitness, like, now and it's still and it's a routine for me, so I'm not... Plunging straight, like, doing something really drastic in January in terms of, like, fitness goals and exercise goals. Um, so I'm really happy about that, but I'm sure there'll be others. And I will update you as I come up with them. But they're just two that spring to mind. So classic, I know. Somebody said, thoughts on Ozempic? Um, oh my god, like, I'm just gonna be so fucking real with you guys. Like... Have I ever, did, have I, like, do me and my friends joke about it all the time being like, I need it? Like, yeah. Because fucking hell, like, the weight that you can lose is ridiculous. And in, like, such a short amount of time. But even just saying that out loud, so unhealthy. And isn't Ozempic meant to be for people with, like, diabetes or PCOS or just, like, people that genuinely, like, struggle to lose weight? I think it's great for, um, to be introduced as, like, to help with obesity and stuff. I think that's amazing if it, if it actually works and, you know, that, that's a treatment for it. Because sometimes with um, obesity, it stems from, like, addiction, whether that be, like, addiction to food and things like that. So if this drug is something that helps, like, really, like, suppress your appetite and help that, like, food addiction and stuff, I think that's really great. So I think that's a, like... So in that sense, I think... I'm all for, like, the tests being done and it being introduced not just for people with diabetes but to help things like that. Like, I think that's that's great, I think. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Like, please, guys, I just see it as everyone else does. I've not needed to necessarily research it myself. However, seeing it, like, glamorised in, like, the real housewives of Beverly Hills and, like, things like that, I think... Um, I mean, you heard the way that I spoke about it 
just now like could be so influential and on the wrong person really dangerous um so in that sense I don't think it should be being as glamorized as much as it has been um and I think it's quite obvious when people are on it now I know about it like I see people talk about the Ozempic face and it's crazy but respect to the um people in the public eye that are actually honest about being on it because that just makes it more realistic for people like if you're completely transparent being like and everyone's been like you look amazing oh my god you've lost so much weight like how did you do that and instead of being like yeah you know just hormones or you know just been working out and exercising that sets a really unrealistic beauty standard that like losing that much weight can be done so quickly and people will like like i said the wrong people will be like, oh, God, well, the only way to do that then must literally, like, not be to eat anything and work out, like, seven days a week. And that's really damaging. So I think if you're on it and you're transparent about it and you can afford to be on it, then that's your business. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Okay, one thing about me, if I do say so myself... I am good at gifts, okay? And so many of you asked, um, what do you get a man for Christmas? Well, if they are deserving of a gift, I feel like something that you know that they want, maybe. Um, or I think fragrance is a good gift, like a sexy fragrance that therefore... Like, it's just always going to have that like association because you got it for them. So hopefully when they spray it, they think of you type of thing. Um... Can I just say, like, you're not getting a man a gift unless he's your boyfriend. No situationship gifts. Okay? No. Um, I think I got a guy once. Creed. Because that's fucking sexy and it's expensive too. So it's, it's like, it's nice. And then I got him something, like, job-related. Like, something that I thought... Because they work in, like, the trades... The trade industry type vibes... Um, so I got him something, I think it was, like, something you could put around your arm to, like, put tools in to just make it, like, easy. I don't know, just something, like, thoughtful and, like, in connection to them or, you know, if they have hobbies like football or, I don't know, golf or, like, something. Just, like, something related to something that you know that they like that they may have not thought of or, like, if they're into their shoes... Maybe not necessarily getting them a pair of shoes if you don't trust yourself to make that sort of judgment. But, like, I don't know, a funky shoe storage holder. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, something helpful. I think a gift that you can't go wrong with and that's, like, sexy vibe. So, yeah, like a fragrance or something. But then something thoughtful, I think, is really cute. And something maybe that they wouldn't buy themselves because they're, like, they just can and don't want to do that. So, yeah, I think, like, d is that helpful? I'm not actually really sure. Um, or maybe just some boxes with a picture of you on it. <laughs> um, somebody said, what are your Christmas plans? God, well, you're going to see it in the vlog. Not the next video, but the one after. Everything that I got up to over Christmas. But it's my first Christmas in three years of, like, actually living back near my family. So, obviously, going to be with my family. Um... It's a little bit of a sticky one, like, personally, um, in the sense of we've just had a few things happen uh, with, like, my grandparents and stuff. So just working that out is a little bit tricky, um, and it will just be, like, a different vibe this year. Um, so just navigating that. But I'm sure I'm going to be at my parents' house. I bring Stevie over. My sister will be there. And we will be drinking bubbles all day, I'm sure. Somebody said, are you glad that you moved? Actually, quite a few of you said that. Yeah, I think so, 100%, in the sense of... Who was I talking to about this the other day? I feel like it was um, Louise, the lady that does my Botox. We were just, like, having a conversation um, about, like, the men in London and it just being a bit better and just, like, the vibes in London are a bit better. It's one of these things where... Manchester is amazing, like, so many incredible places to go, hence why, you know, I could write you endless lists of the best restaurants and, like, clubs and, like, bars, they just have so many and they're all so close together, it's just, like, such a vibe, 
But for me, it was like, if you don't necessarily really have anyone to go to those places with, like, it's just a bit of a waste. And especially when you're like, because you want to go out and like meet guys and stuff. So when you're the only like single friend, like not everyone's on that vibe. Everyone wants to go home and like really doesn't want to go out to like things, places like that. So I think I've made the right choice of like coming back here, like not only to just be close to my family, obviously I purchased a property down here because this is where I wanted to like put my roots down. But I've just obviously noticed such a difference being around all of my single friends and the more time, like the, the amount that we go out and like what that's done for my personal life and things like that. So I like it going back to the way that it used to be of like just going up to Manchester to see my friends and like have the best time and like go back to all my favorite restaurants and like not necessarily like living up there I'm like I'm definitely prefer like this dynamic and I think it's like worked out well I mean you sort of see everyone is just like everyone in Manchester like just does their own thing and I think I was a bit bored of just like doing my own thing like alone if that makes sense so yeah I just wanted to like be back down here obviously be a lot a lot close to my family was a main thing for me um, and just be able to like help them out a bit with things. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy that I moved. But will say, Manchester at Christmas time is just like the best. There's no markets around here really. Well, there probably are some. They're just like not the same. It's just like not as good. But I haven't actually seen too many people post about the Manchester markets. Maybe they've fallen off. Anyway, what else have we got? Oh my god. People were asking me about the Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater cheating scandal. Is it because you know I love my Ari? I mean, I don't really know. <gasps> Tell you what's absolutely fucking disgusting. Have you seen the side by side of like Frankie Grande and Ethan Slater? They're twins. They're the same person. It's bizarre. It's giving Rachel from Friends when she dates, goes on her dates with goes on a date with that guy called Russ, and it's Russ. <laughs> like, they're literally the same. It's crazy. I even think a news article used a picture of Frankie Grande when they were talking about Ethan Slater because it was it was a genuine mistake. They, they looked the same. Um, I don't... I think... I actually, like, her dating history has been a bit questionable. I cannot lie. There's been a few things like that. Oh, my God, you guys. Um... Guys, does anyone else do this? Why am I welling up? I feel mad on a walk. Am I okay? Oh my god. Oh. Guys. There's a slight hill in the road and he nearly just fell. Oh my god. Anyways, sorry, I don't want to speak too loud. He probably wouldn't be able to hear me anyway, but he was literally just walking right in front of the car. Oh my god, I hope he gets home safe. Anyway, um, yeah, her dating history is not good. Like, wasn't there the whole big Sean Naya Rivera stuff? Um, bit of an overlap there. Or like with like Jean. Is it Jean Iko? Janae Iko? I am not 100% sure actually how you spell, pronounce her name. Jean? Janae? Iko? Aiko? You know who I'm talking about. Or, like, just, like, yeah, something there. I'm not sure. I think there's, like, a bigger picture that needs to be looked at of the sense I just don't think she finds what she's looking for in, like, any relationship. Like, she's looking for something more. And it's got to the point where she's really just trying all avenues. And sometimes when you have everything... Like, you hear about, like, the richest people in the world... Like, they're the ones, like, when I um did, sorry, this is, like, so kind of off topic, but it is meant to be on topic. When I did that podcast episode with the fetish expert, she was telling me how it's all about, like, a power thing for a lot of people and a lot of the, like, people that can basically get themselves anything they want tend to have the more bizarre and, like, disgusting fetishes because that's the only way that they're like feeling some sort of like th 
surreal almost because they get everything that they want all the time. Or there's, you know, the people that, you know, are, are there, like the CEO of a company and their fetish is to be like completely dominated by someone because they are in power all day, every day. So that's their only time to like be submissive and just be told what to do and like they get off on that like type of thing. So, <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that maybe Ariana, you know, she's, like, she had that year, well, she, I mean, her whole life, essentially. Just the most incredibly, like, amazing life of, like, success and music and things like that. And in relationships, that seems to be the one area that she's just not finding clearly what she wants. And so she's now just looking elsewhere and, like, you try and, I don't know, get people that you can't have. And then she got him. So I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Maybe this new wicked persona that she's got means that she's attracted to people that look like her brother. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just wonder if it will last and it will be worth it. Because I think people thought that they'd broken up for a while. And then there's been recent pictures of that they're still together. So obviously they're still together. Can't believe he left like his family. and I mean, I can believe that he left his wife and kids because it's ariana grande but like that shouldn't really be like a factor like <sighs> people eh? like sometimes you think that you've done bad things and you think like that and you're like well i didn't do that <laughs> someone said i just want to know where it's good to go out in guildford there really like isn't i unless you love a pub like i love so many of the pubs in guildford like king's head um like the wayside but they're more like wholesome vibes i say that actually the king said i've had some messy times in there but like pews if you want to get a bit crazy you might go to ali bar at like fucking 1 a.m 10 in the night um or if you like go down towards the bottom of town i'm not actually sure it's there anymore to be honest pop world has been the only club there that has like lived throughout everyone it's like rained the longest like so many clubs down there have been like shut down and like reopened to something else i think now there's a place called labyrinth i've been in there for about 10 seconds before i left i'm not sure why i think just my friends wanted to go somewhere else there's one on the corner though called y bar not been in there yet it's kind of it's quite outside like even in this temperature like it's kind of all outside but i think they have like loads of heaters everywhere and stuff there might be some like upstairs the inside bits but i've not been there yet since moving back and it like actually even existing so maybe there sadly casino has gone it's not sadly it's actually good riddance because there used to be like <laughs> mushrooms growing in the toilets in there i've had some terrible times in casino as well i can't lie but a lot of you guys are kind of asking like the similar sorts of things i'm sure you guys can guess um some of you guys asked me about like what i thought on um like i'm a celebrity get me out of here like the people in the jungle um gutted that nella went out second because i think just the way that that whole situation played out really showed that it's i think it's it's all in the editing and the way that they put it together and the way that they only show you what they want you to see if that makes sense, um, because look what happened to Fred, like, and the way that that panned out, because everyone was so, when Nella snapped at Fred, everyone was like, oh my god, he's the nicest guy, like, can't believe that she would do that. Bearing in mind, obviously, her parents are a trigger to her. It's quite evident that she'd remembered it wrong. Nella, if you're watching this, like, this is just how I was, like, seeing it. Because they played the clip of, like, what was actually said. And then I think what she recited back as to what happened wasn't exactly how it happened. But sometimes when it's a triggering subject, you do remember it wrong. And you just remember the fact that it was, in this case, her parents being brought up and him saying, I could be your dad. And I think that for her was just so triggering. And unless you can actually put yourself in her shoes 100%, like being in a jungle, being starving, being with a bunch of people that you don't even know, losing two, like both of your parents, unless you can do all of those things, like, it's so easy to sit at home with all of your friends and family on your on your sofa watching the TV, stomach full, to be like, I would never say that. 
I would never speak to someone like that. You just, you just can't. So I think she definitely deserved a lot more grace from the internet. Fucking hell. Like, Jesus, like, the hate just for snapping at him, like, and saying, you know, and, like, setting the boundary, I thought was absolutely ridiculous. Then, like I said, then you saw the way that it panned out with Fred, and he's not great either. Like, he really, like, the way he was speaking to Josie and, like, being so controlling in the kitchen, like, what, like, was everyone giving him grace? Because, oh, he's a chef, he's allowed to talk like that. Like, what, the, the double standards was, was ridiculous. But guy that she went out second... My girl Josie, love her so much. Don't think she watches my videos, but she is a friend. Like, we went on a trip together once and she always called me Queenie. So I really wanted her to be like Queen of the Jungle, but wasn't to be. I think they had such a great cast this year. Um, and yeah, I think Sam was definitely a deserving winner. That's my thoughts. When I'm a celeb, and would I ever do it? Not that I'm a celeb enough to like go on it. I know what I, you guys all know what I need to go on. I need to go on Deal or No Deal. Or the chase, or something like that. But um, my battery's running low, uh, so let me like wrap it up. Loads of you guys are asking me the same sorts of things, so let me just find something to finish off on. Okay, I'm just gonna end on this because so a few of you guys have asked me this too. Asked me how it went with the guy I shot my shot with, and like sent a DM with guys. It's still kind of going. Like no in person meet just yet i think in my mind i'm waiting for our paths to cross again before maybe like arranging something because the vibes might be totally different in person but yeah it's progressed to whatsapp that's what i'm gonna say anyway i'll end there you guys let me just finish or like have a little, have a little sip of my hot chocolate but they were pretty much all of the topics that you guys asked me about. So I hope you enjoyed this little catch up in the car. The weather's getting a little bit shit. So I timed this quite well. I miss doing this. I miss sitting in the car, having a chat, having a catch up. Feel free to sound off in the comments below. I'll make sure to do more of these, I think, because they are fun. It gives me an excuse to just like get out of the house and, and chill. But yeah, like I said, you've got two videos to look forward to next week in the sense of a final Christmas get ready with me. I'm going to pick the best one. Um, Okay, so obviously I've had to plan like loads of Christmas outfits, which, oh my God, Rachel, first world problems. But I did one for Pretty Little Thing the other day and I absolutely loved that. Gutted, I forgot to film it. But I did try and post the dress like everywhere because I loved it so much. Um, so yeah, we'll film a Get Ready With Me this week. And then the week after, I'll make sure I'll post over Christmas a nice long spend the week with me of everything that I'm doing next week or this week. Because today is Sunday that you're watching this. So literally from tomorrow, pretty much, crazy week. I'm sure you'll see it on my Instagram a little bit too. I don't want to give too much away because I want you to watch the vlog. But yeah, lots to look forward to. Um, I hope you guys are all going to have a fun week this week. If you've got any festive plans, breaking up from work, all of that good stuff, stay safe and uh, try the turkey trimmings tasty from Costa. That's all I've got to say. Bye. Bye.